New day, new project. So, woke up this morning and really wanted to go wing the doors. I actually got up at like 7 o'clock, which I normally don't do even during the week. So, for me to do it on a weekend is pretty rare. And, uh, no, we're not going to be doing the hood. Even though we have that hood, we're going to be doing something special with that one. Just for shits and giggles because I got it really cheap. So, we're going to be starting the gold wing door conversion on this. Now, I did get bored last night and ended up... Kind of just throwing a piece of all thread in here just to make an extended slider. So at least now I can open the door somewhat. Much to my surprise, this little railing kind of hits the bunny tip. So I can't open it too much, but I can open it a lot more because I was getting bound up on the tire. So first thing that we're going to do, which we don't need to be outside for, is we're going to make our brackets. I'm not going to really go through this. I mean, basically, I just got a piece of uh, angle iron. I'm going to make four brackets because uh, I need 490 degrees because we are goal winging both back doors and the side door. So I'm going to need 490s, four flats, and we'll go from there. Show you in a second. Next thing you're going to need, you're going to need like a two inch piece of steel. This is, uh, I don't know, I don't think it's a quarter inch, maybe like eighth inch or so, whatever. And what you're going to do is you're going to make the brackets that go inside the van. Now the angle iron that goes on the door. Me, I like to make all my brackets at once. I just cut a bunch of like, I don't know, two and a half inch pieces. You can make them as big as you want. Myself, I like clamping everything together and making all the brackets at once. That way they're all perfectly symmetrical. You can see, you know, four different pieces. So I cut it, sanded it, drilled it. These four are ready to come off. Hit them real quick and prime them. These go inside the doors, which when we get to that point, you'll see. Also, while I still have this clamped up, I'm going to go get my uh, 13 millimeter ball studs, make sure they fit in the ends. And I'm sure my salt tappers will fit in here. Third thing you're going to need, you're going to want a four pack of 13 millimeter ball studs. Now these are 5 16 18, that's really not going to matter, by 5 8 inch long. So these are going to go right into there. So you can see they fit fine. So this is ready to unpack. Sand prime. And be right back. All right, so here's where we're at. We got our inner door braces made. These are externals. These will actually get mounted to the sidewall of the van. And now we're moving on. We'll call this step one. This was the easy part. And the reason I have two sets is because I'm doing the back doors too. I'm not sure how that's going to work out, but we'll find out. Step two, you're going to need to get yourself some four inch door hinges and you have to make sure that they have the pin in them because first thing you're going to do is you're going to remove the pin and get your hinge set up. Now when this goes on the van, you can see the hinge is a little different. So this piece here is going to go on the door. So we're going to measure, and I already know it's three-eighths of an inch, and we're going to cut it, and then we're going to weld a 90 degree. So I'll get this cut, fire up the welder, show you what I mean. All right, this is how you want to get set up. You want the outside facing out, and you're just making an L. Now I clamp it in place. Yeah, you don't have to clamp it. You could just hold it. This doesn't have to be exact, but, you know, we made it a 90 anyway because it's going to hit. It's going to pivot. So now we're going to go through, we're going to tack, uh, we're going to tack her up, we're going to send her home. So, let's throw one tack in place, and then you'll figure the rest out. And we'll throw a second, right here. Alright, let's send her home. So here is our hinge so far. And you want this, uh, let me put this down. You want this to face down over the lip of the door. Uh, the problem is the hinge itself is going to end up like that. So all I did, I pretty much, uh, I don't have a break. So I kind of just clamped this in the vise. Like that. And I just whacked it with a hammer until I got it to 90 degrees. Little ghetto, but it works. And now you can see, she's at 90 degrees with a little bend. 
So next thing we got to do is we have to cut this and I'll show you how we're going to do that. It too high. So we're going to have to cut this. So all we're going to do is we're going to flip her upside down, lay her down there, mark our line and go cut it. And I'm going to cut it right on the line because I can always trim it. So let's get that taken care of. You are going to do another 90. Now, I don't know. Let me take this clamp off. How well you can see. We got the neck pointing down. We go over 3 eighths down roughly like a half. And then we use a spare piece of the hinge to finish it off. And we're going to go through, hammer this home, and then we're going to go test fit it. The first one is in, and it closes, and it does not hit. I got eh, probably like two credit cards worth of a gap. And it's not even all the way down because the self-tapper's kind of stripped out a little bit. So, you can see, we'll open her up. No problems. This is a little wonky here. Temporary. The hinge is on, not welded in or anything yet, but I got a pretty decent gap. I mean, uh, probably like uh, oh, enough for a hinge, even though the hinge is going to be down and lower. So uh, I'm going to make another one, and we're going to get these mounted. And obviously, the door opens and closes. It pretty much sits right on it, but you know that's going to change. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the hinge and we're going to cut roughly three quarters of an inch off. You know, as you can see, I went through and I kind of measured it. So we're going to cut three quarters of an inch off, slide it in, see how it looks. Okay, now for the hinge that mounts on the door, we had to cut the, a little over three quarters of an inch off of it. So now we're going to line her up on here. And just make sure everything lines up. Now we do have to go back and we are going to be dropping a piece of metal in there which is really simple. I'll show you when we get to that stage. We just want to make sure this all lines up. So you can see the door's out a little bit. We'll push her in. Make sure all the gaps are good. Yep, pretty symmetrical all the way down. And uh, if you look underneath, uh, you're not gonna be able to really see right now, but we're in a pretty good spot. Basically, all we have to do is put a little filler piece in here and then weld to it. And that's where it gets a little tricky. But we're going to make the other hinge and get all set. I was telling you about before. As you can see, that's not 90 degrees. That's more like 75. And uh, this has got to be straight. It's got to be pretty much parallel with that. So uh, I don't have a break or anything because I'm not that technologically advanced. So I'm more or less going to have to bad chad this shit. And we're just going to whack it with a hammer until we get it straight. She's straight. The hinges are up. They're all mounted. Well, mounted to the door. And the door is still functional. I don't know if anyone else has ever done it quite like this, but you know, with the labor shortage, I couldn't get anyone over. So just to show you, let me set this down and open the door up. So for the most part, the hard part is done. Off that you had for the hinge, with a little bit of love, she's gonna lay up in there perfectly. So, let's get sanding. We have the filler plates welded in, front and back. And we went through, we took off this rear striker. I don't know if we can use that later on, but 
and we took off the front now we're gonna go through and we're gonna just cut these just get rid of them so we don't need them for right now i'm thinking there might be a way that i can actually go in this door without ever taking it off and doing it with one person uh this is the only problem i haven't decided how i want to tackle that but uh we're gonna get all this taken care of and see where we're at i know this i could take off easily from inside the van my extended slider i could take that off from the outside of the van no problem so uh i'm gonna have to dig into this i mean i know i don't need this rod i'll probably just cut it don't need it chop chop i could take this apart and take these pieces out but uh, i don't want to risk messing with all that so chop chop get right back to you okay so next thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this junk. So here, if you push this out far enough, you'll get to this pin. You just pop that right up into place. There's nothing really holding it. And then we're just going to disconnect these clips and that'll be gone. Now I did take one bolt out of here because I'm still thinking I could do this door by myself. We'll see. I'm going to get rid of this and then shut the door. And right here on the door. And I'm just sliding this whole mechanism out the bottom. I mean, I'm not going to need it at all. So, that's gone. So now I got nothing to catch me here. Just in case. Before uh, we get to tacking the top hinge in place. Is... Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention. Take this whole gasket down. Just get it out of your way. But besides that, uh, we got to take this one single bolt off. Once we get that off... We can pretty much just, you know, slide that right out the back, I'm hoping. And the door is going to, there's going to be a lot of weight because the only thing holding the door in the front is this little roller right here. But I figure, yeah, the back holds it, front should hold it. So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to get rid of that, hopefully. And uh, we're going to get this into position. We're going to get her leveled up. I took the whole bracket off. All you gotta do is, you know, unscrew the three bolts and it slides right out the bottom. So I'm gonna push the door back into place and line her up. You can see without that on there, this gap is way off. It gets very, very, very skinny. So this is where we gotta level it. I mean, for the most part, just gonna put a screwdriver underneath here, lift this up and it'll tilt the whole door, make sure our body lines are straight. And then we're gonna tack up top. So let me get that all set up. Sun's getting real low. So we just got home from work and now we're ready to uh, ready to mount this door for the first time in the last time. I'm gonna try to do this solo because, well, no one's around. So what we're gonna do here, we already got all the hardware off the inside as you just saw. We still have the track up here and the track there, but they're easily accessible. So what you're gonna wanna do is if you look inside, you can see I put a screwdriver here just to hit the hinge up. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tack that piece right there. Shit, can't really see. The very top hinge. We're going to be tacking this. We're going to throw some really good tacks on it. We're going to hold it up. You know, we'll hold up the, uh, you know, we'll put it in this side. And that should hold up that side. So, we're going to tack those in place. We got one, two, three, four tacks. Over here, you know, we gotta push it in a little bit because it's out. You can see, I just used these jacks here to level up my door and I threw a shim here so I could get the body gap symmetrical. And I had to throw a shim right around there. So my gaps are good, they're solid, the door is level, the body lines, they all match. So we're gonna get going. Wish me luck. Well, we got her tacked up. They are not the most beautiful tacks, but they should hold the door in place. So now we're going to go on the inside and take off that bracket and make sure that hinge holds. And then we'll come out here and take off this back bracket. One other thing I should have mentioned earlier, you will get sparks inside the van. I did have a uh, piece of reflective material up and I'll set a fire extinguisher because uh, safety first. So let's get going side bracket off and uh it seems to be supporting it now's the real test we're going to take the back bracket off and then it's going to be pretty much free floating and if anything catastrophic is going to happen it's going to happen when i lift up the door 
or as soon as I take off these hinges. So wish me luck. Here's the test. I do this real carefully. Oh, and I'm caught on something. I don't know what I'm caught on. There we are. Oh, oh boy, something fucking sounded like it fell. I don't know. Um, maybe the bolt fell. Not sure. Nope. Good, 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 good. I think the bolt fell. Um, I think it's holding. All right, time to get a prop rod. Okay, that's uh, that's not on. Okay, one tack didn't hold, so we're gonna tack her before we do that. I go over. We're gonna try this again. Much gooder. All right, so I took my two by four. I just popped the board six foot four inches up because this is plenty high for me. I'm only 5'8", five 5'9 five on a good day. So now we can get underneath here and we can hammer these home here and here. So it is possible to go in your door by yourself with no help. It's just not fun. We're welding over your head. Throw some tape or something over your ears, because the last thing you want is an ember to hit your eardrum. Heard of it happening? Don't know anyone personally, but don't want it to happen to me. Okay, we got her all hammered home. She's all welded in. She is not going anywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the gasket back on. And we're also going to put this little retainer back on here, because that should help hold the door in place. And we're going to close it. Like six bucks or so at Lowe's, you're going to want to pick yourself up a little one inch, uh, 16th inch piece of aluminum, 90 degree. Now you're going to need this right here where you're going to be mounting the uh, strut. Reason is if you just self tap into here, over time it's going to bend, you know, and the self tappers will come out because that happened on the last end. So we're going to take like an eight inch strip, pretty much put it there and self tap through that. And that eliminates that problem. So I'm going to get this cut pre-drilled and we're going to go grab, grab the stu struts. At this point, you're going to need your, your mounting balls for the struts. So what I did, I got this 8-inch piece of aluminum. I threw a mark right there in the center at 4 inches. And I threw a mark up here on both sides. Actually, this is going to be on the inside. But I'll fix that. So this bracket's going to go up here. Pretty much just going to line up the lines and you're going to self tap the bracket in. Let me show you. Just like that with the ball facing the outside. So I can't do this with one hand, so I'm going to put this down and get these in place. What you want are your struts. And these, they should just pop right into place. Well, Oh, no, actually, I got to pull the pin. So you pull the pin, pop them in, and 
then they lay down. So let's do that real quick. So uh, one thing that you want to do, I should mention, is when you put your strut in, the fluid reservoir always goes up top. And I saw this in another video, I forget who did it, but it makes a lot of sense. The reason you do that is because you want the liquid up here to always keep this gasket wet. Otherwise, if the gasket dries out, you end up with premature, well, I'm sure I can think of a joke here, but premature failure. So at this point, wherever this falls, that's where your gasket's going to be. So I'm going to put the camera down, put these both into place, and then we're going to try the door with the final test. As you can see, we got the brackets all in. Uh, like I said, wherever they fall, that's just where you put them in. Uh, this is the main thing, getting this measurement right up top. On the last van, we probably had like six sets of holes until we finally got it right. So I haven't tried this yet. We're going to pull the board and see if we can close it. If not, we're just going to have to be drilling some holes. Mathematically, it should work. Okay. That's good. Fantastic. And there's plenty of room. Guys, uh, I think that's pretty much going to do it. I'm going to put together a parts list also. And please, like and subscribe. Catch you later.